All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be going over should you get a home lab or should you just stick with Packet Tracer, GNS3, even G? So um, let's, just, let's talk about that. So what is a home network? So a home network basically is you buying your own rack, your own servers, your own switches, um, your own firewall, you know, setting them up and actually physically buying them, right? So you can you can buy these from eBay, right? I would re I would highly recommend you buy them used, right? If you are going to build your own home lab, um, you can get them from cheap from eBay um, and stuff like that. So um, what what exactly is the benefit of that? So when you have a home lab, first of all, you have that financial commitment that you've spent on equipment, right? You just probably spent $400 on maybe a couple of switches, a couple of routers, um, some firewall um, equipment, a bunch of um, maybe Cat 4, Cat 7 cables, Cat 5, whatever. Um, you have all these equipment, right? So now you can actually play around with it. Um, the cool thing is now that you actually have it, you can actually physically touch them, see them, power them on, um, console into them, um, you know, boot them up. And it's your own little home network, right? It's, it's like your own little piece of equipment that you built yourself, right? So you kind of have that attachment to it because you actually built it. So that's the nice thing about having a home lab because um, you've spent the money, you're, you're probably more committed as well. So I believe that getting a home lab is quite useful. Um, did I myself get a home lab? No. So I actually was stubborn about this. I was actually gifted a switch, but I actually never powered it on, which is kind of crazy. I had the switch, but I never really, because in my head, I'm like, this is before I became a network engineer. I was like, why do I need a, to play around with this when I can just use Packet Tracer, or GNS3, and it was working for me, and I liked using it. Uh, maybe that was just my stubbornness um, for not really go, going into it, but I wish I did, to be honest. When you actually have the physical equipment, it forces you to learn about the stuff that Pack Tracer or GNS3 won't show you, right? Like powering the devices, maybe adding cards to the devices. Um, it gives you that rack and stack experience that you don't get from Packet Tracer. You won't sort of get that experience. And it's quite useful because when you go into a job and they may ask you during an interview setting, have you done rack and stack? And if you have your own home lab, that's a really, really good way of getting that rack and stack experience, which is awesome. So um, if you guys are, you know, have the money for it, I would highly recommend it. Um, and I actually just went ahead and uh, just bought my uh, my first little set of uh, of equipment. So I bought some Palo Alto firewalls, some Juniper EX forty three hundreds, as well as some Cisco um, you know layer three switches. So I'm about to go overhead and play around with that very soon. I, I just made the order, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but getting the hardware is, I would say, a useful thing. Um, but it also shows your commitment to the field, right? So it gives you that really good hands-on experience. And the most important thing is you can build your own little projects on there. Um, you can do little things. You can, you know, troubleshoot it, um, play around with it, see how the cables connect. Um, and you can just kind of just learn from there, right? And then, you know, you don't even need to get Packet Tracer or all those softwares because those softwares kind of are buggy sometimes. And also another time, that, if you guys use them before, they kind of just suck. Like they're not really the best. I would say Packet Tracer is good, but there's still some issues with it. Um, when you have your own little home lab, you know, you have your own little lab. The only bad thing is it takes up a lot of space. These labs are loud, they're hot sometimes, they take up a lot of space, but they're very useful because, um, especially for on-the-job experience, you, you know, it, it's it's as close as you can get to on-job experience because you have your device, you console connected, you can set up SSH, you can set up OSPF if you have multiple switches, you can play around with spanning tree, you can cause your own broadcast storm, you can cause mistakes, you can just destroy your network, and worst case scenario, you hit unplug and you can restart it. Right, um, it's, a, it's a lab environment, it's non-production, um, and it gives you that really that sense of you that pr that sense of pride is also there too because you feel like, hey, I'm doing something. Like, hey, I'm actually building up a switch. Hey, I actually, I actually built a router. Like, I can't believe it, and it just feels amazing. Um, and I and I can't wait to actually get the equipment and maybe share with you guys. Um, and it, let me know if you guys are also interested in the idea of me. Um, you know, sharing my labbing experience. I would love to let you uh, maybe share um, me building some labs, maybe some some firewalls, and showing you guys that stuff. So, um, but yeah, uh, that's a little bit of a sign tangent. But I want to let you know, guys know um, it's really useful. I highly recommend it. If you are if you are willing to spend the money, do it. If you're committed to network engineering, though, if you're not committed to network engineering, maybe not. But I know a lot of people still have it, um, and it's just that. So, but do you need it though? No. I, I didn't need it. I was able to land at my first position as a network engineer without even physically even touching a switch, right? Um, right. I've never even, you know, it, it's you're fine. Like you don't need it. 
Some people will say, hey, you need you need a hands, you need a lab. You, you can lab on package tracing. That's more than enough. That's more than enough. Um, and on top of that, if you're brand new, I would not like, as soon as, let's say you decide you want to become a network engineer, you're starting your CCNA studies, don't immediately just buy a lab. I would just play around with package tracer, learn how to do it, um, and then use your lab to do your, you know, what you need to do there afterwards, after you're, you've committed to this field. Um, and then you can also use both. You can use like a home lab or like you can use packet tracer to sort of build your configurations just to see like how you do it. And then you would go to your actual lab and actually do what you need to get done. Right. So, um, and there's a lot of cool things you can do. You can build your own little data center as well. You can probably add an SSD and you can maybe, you know, SSH into there or, or not SSH into the SSD, but um, you can like maybe set up like some sort of VPN into your home network. So if you ever a way you can VPN into your home network and connect to the SSD, your own little like home network, it's it's really cool, guys. There's a lot of opportunity in there. You know, you can set up your own IPs or private IPs and all that stuff. So there's a lot that you can do with your home lab. Just know that it takes up space. It takes up a lot of, um, I'm not sure if it takes up a lot of energy. It may or may not. Um, it's loud and... It's yeah. You just got to set it up yourself. It's it. It takes a lot of sweat equity, uh, as as a lot of home builders say. So, um, or homeowners say. So, that's what it is. Um, I do I recommend it. I used to be in the case where I said I don't recommend it, but now I'm now that I am in the industry, I kind of like want it. So I don't know if it's more of a want or a need, but you don't need it. I absolutely don't need it if you want to land a job. But if it, this is just more for fun, um, you're interested in labbing then get it. I would highly recommend it. So it's all up to you. It does cost money. Um, if you're going on eBay, look for one that works, look for one that's cheap and make sure you're getting the right pricing. So ask AI for, Hey, what's the price I would pay for this and look for the best price, right? And get it used. There is no benefit to getting a new equipment, right? There's no benefit. You're not in production. This is lab. If it's production, right? Where there's customers impacting and in real life and setting, then yeah, you would have to get a, um, you know, a really good one, right? So get a used one for now. Um, get the cheapest one. Don't overspend it and just play around. So hopefully that guys uh, that answers your question, whether you should get a home lab or should you get, you know, virtual labs. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for your time. Um, if you guys want mentorship and guidance on how to get into tech, please click the link below and I can show you exactly how to get into your first network engineering role. Um, but uh, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to subscribe, click the subscribe button. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns or whatever you want to let me know about, um, send me a comment down below. Um, and thank you guys so much for your viewership and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and peace.